Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Bo. I'm in Costa Rica right now and I'm sharing my journey to 1 million error with my startup. This week I'm focusing on a few big tasks in my startup. First, I'm working on a marketing strategy for high season. I will also show you our marketing strategy from last year and reflecting on what we learned and what we are going to improve this year. I'm also hoping that this week our new feature designs will be ready. So if it's ready, I will share it with you. Second big task for this week, I'm going to hire a CPA to proofread and fact check all our articles about taxes. On the personal side, I'm sticking with my daily exercises, which I started last week and I really enjoy it. I also have a new goal to fast every day at least for 18 hours because I feel that Last week's I've been overeating a lot and I need to take control of my food habits. I'm also planning to go on a short road trip this weekend. So if the weather would be great, I will hike volcano with a lake in the crater and I will show you beautiful nature in Costa Rica. By the end of this week and this video, I will share how everything went and if I managed to hit all of my goals. I'm trying to be honest here, so we'll see how it goes. Let's get started. We decided to proofread our articles with the CPA help, uh, with the help of a person that have experience in taxation. We want to provide more details for our readers and provide more value. But also our hypothesis that with proofreading as with rights notes and disclaimer, we can show our authority to search engines and have more traffic from Google and other search engines. Let me show you the process, how I review the content and how I make a decision which freelancer to pick to work long term. Let me show you the difference between work of two freelancers that I decided to work with. The first one, which is my chip, uh, just added a few links to the article, no edits, you even see this by the article. The second one added, uh, even suggested to add a disclaimer, added a lot of edits, a lot of notes, even asked some questions and suggestions. So. Since we have a goal to provide more value to our readers and give as many details as possible about the process, about taxation, for us it's no brainer which freelancer to pick to work with. Let me show you how marketing strategy for previous year looked like. So at the beginning we have dates. It was our assumption about time frame of a high season. And uh, it, the end of the high season was connected to the deadline when Americans need to file taxes. We learned from our previous years that for our business, high season lasts till the end of the May. So we will uh, adjust it this year. Then goals in terms of the MRR new customer and we achieved these goals. So it's great. Then our assumptions about target audience. Probably this year I will update it a bit based on what we learned. Then value proposition, short form of the value proposition and hyperlink to longer version with value proposition with company values, etc. Then how we are going to iterate, how we gonna gather feedback from the customers, then budget and resources. At that point of time, we were unprofitable. We were like at the very beginning. We agreed on how much each founder will contribute to the budget according to the equity that we have in the company. It was just assumption because we became profitable in March and then we readjust this budget, but we didn't have need to update this document because strategy and plan is more like a direction where I need to move. You don't need to stick 
to it too much because you will adjust it, you will have some feedback, some marketing channels will work. So it's just a direction of where I'm going to. Then uh, channels, it's one of the most interesting parts. It's a list of channels and then parameters on how to prioritize them. I will share more details about these frameworks that I use uh, later in the video. And last but not least is a uh, plan uh, with all tasks uh, that we need to do. And uh, I will also share my learnings about planning. But to be short, we plan too much activities, too much channels. And I was overwhelmed most of the time and I felt anxious about the uh, amount of tasks that we need to do. Even we haven't done most of the tasks and most of the activities that we plan, we still achieve these goals. So one of the learnings is uh, that we need to plan less to achieve our goals and to be less anxious and to focus on the most important activities. So that's how strategy for previous year looked like. Let me show you a draft of new marketing strategy for this high season. So we also have dates here. I split it uh, high season into two time period, warm up season with a lower demand. But when we need to do some preparation activities and also do some marketing in high season with the highest demand when we expect to get as much customers as possible. I did a projection and in order for us to reach 10,000 MRR, we need to grow even slower than we are growing right now. So we will target 15,000 MRR in the end of the May and also two or 300 customers. I just updated a bit target audience, uh, made it a bit older based on personal observations, value proposition, customer feedback is the same. So channels. Um, I did a channel matrix this year a bit different. In uh, previous year, when we didn't have like any traction, any marketing channels, I just dropped it from the scratch and I ideated different channels that we can do. And it was a lot, to be honest. This year, I just focusing on SEO, Google ads, maybe some other advertising and affiliates. And also I split it not like into the channels, but in specific campaigns or approaches that we can use in these channels. But let me explain how this prioritization work and how this framework uh, helped me to work with acquisition strategy. So this framework called uh, channel matrix. And uh, what do we have here? Uh, we have acquisition channels or some activities, campaigns inside of the channels. And then we have parameters. The first one is targeting and it shows us how precisely we can target our target audience is this channel. For example, for us, marketing activities that connected to residency change, content uh, connected to extra taxes, it's the best targeting that we have because uh, it's our core audience. The second one is cost. It's our expectation about customer acquisition in this channel. Based on our previous experience, based on our expertise, opinions from third parties, or just something from internet. All of these parameters is measured from low to medium to high. You can make it more advanced and measure these parameters from 1 to 10. But in my experience, usually it don't make a lot of sense. Also, for some attributes, high is good. For some attributes, high is bad. For example, if targeting is high, it's great. If cost is low, it's great. Then input and output time. Input time is our expectation about how much time do we need to invest before we can start this experiment. And output time is our expectation about how much time we need to get results from this experiment. For example, in SEO, usually uh, output time is high, but in our case, we know that with articles like this, 
we get traction relatively fast, maybe in a few months. So input time medium because we need to write this article, it's only medium, and output time is also medium. Control is how much control do we have on this channel? Can we turn it on, turn it off immediately? And usually sale have a um, low control and scale. How scalable is this channel of activity? In our case, it just maybe 40 to 45 states uh, that we will write this article about. So scale is low. So I scored all of the activities, all of the hypotheses uh, that we have and uh, how I make a decision what we should work on. So first of all, we want to look at channels with a lot of green because it's just easier and better usually. And then you can also prioritize based on what you're looking for right now. Maybe you don't have money, uh, so you need to pick activities with a low cost. Or, I know, you don't have time, so you need to do some activities with low input and output time. That's how it works. In the next weekly video, I will share our budgeting for this marketing strategy. And also, I will show you projections how I build it and what our action plan and how we're gonna implement it. So I had this plan to watch a volcano with a lake in the crater and Google Maps showed me that it's two hours ride. So my plan was to go in the evening to the hotel nearby, have a rest and in the early morning with no crowds to see a volcano. Sounds easy, right? Well, things didn't go as smoothly as I thought. Firstly, I realized that two hours drive is for car not for motorbike so in the end it was four hours drive and it's part of the adventure and i like to ride a bike then to make it even better i fell from the bike nothing serious but it slowed me down a little bit and then it started raining firstly it was a light rain but then it started rain hard two hours in a pouring rain i was completely soaked and to make things harder it was cold because it's a mountain and I didn't expect that it was a plus 15 Celsius outside. In the end, I was just screaming just too cold because I was so cold, so wet. So two hours after I arrived to my hotel, or as I thought I did, because I realized that I booked a hotel for the wrong dates and it's fully booked this night. So I was completely wet, cold, and I had to find a new place to sleep. Luckily, I found a hotel five minutes drive I booked it, I arrived completely wet, and I finally, I had a sleep. Then I woke up next morning and weather had a different plans. So it was a fog, clouds, no volcanoes, no craters, no chance to see it at all. But you know what? I saw waterfalls, I saw some animals, sloths, cute birds, some bulls, also toucans. It's really a cute bird, uh, one of my favorites. But this whole experience reminded me something important. Life and building startups, a lot like this trip. You make plans thinking you will get at some point at certain time, but then everything changed. You fail, you get soaked, you get cold. And in the end, you might arrive to a completely different destination. But along the way, you learn, you adapt, and what you discover through this journey is as valuable, if not more is originally what you plan to get. So remember, it's not about destination, it's about journey. So yeah, I didn't see a volcano, but the ride, the journey, totally worth it. Just look at it.
This week I managed to achieve everything that I planned. I started articles proofreading, I had a progress with our marketing strategy, I stick to exercise routine and I exercised every day, even if it wasn't very easy. In the second part of the week I was more tired, or probably because of exercises, so maybe I will mix it with the cardio. I also started fasting regularly as in the past and uh, I feel great. This week I also had a conversation with my close friend from Lisbon and we hadn't seen each other for about six months and he told me that I look better now and that he noticed that I do something with my body. Honestly, it was such a boost to hear this because I see myself every day and it's hard to notice any progress. So I'm even more motivated to continue what I'm doing. That's it. For next week, I will keep pushing and let's see where the journey takes us next. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like the video if you liked all of these views in nature that I saw you. And subscribe to the channel so you won't miss next weekly video that I will publish in a week. See you next week.